A black doctor died of Coro weeks after she described a white doctor dismissing her pain and concerns about her treatment as she laid in an Indiana hospital. Dr. Susan Moore passed away on Sunday due to complications from Coro. The internist, which she was, she was a whole internist, died about two weeks after she shared a video in which she accused a doctor at Indiana University Health North Hospital, IU North, of ignoring her complaints of pain and requests for medication because she was black, even though she was both a patient and a doctor herself. In a video that was posted earlier this month, she filmed herself from a hospital bed and recounted her experience at IU North. Yesterday, but Dr. Bannock B-A-N-N-E-C wanted to send me home. You know, at that time, I'd only received two treatments of the remdesivir. He says, ah, you don't need it. You're not even short of breath. I said, yes, I am. She had to beg to receive remdesivir, she recalled in the video the antiviral drug used to treat patients who are hospitalized for Coro and are not in need of mechanical ventilation. Dr. Moore first tested positive for Coro on November 29th, according to her Facebook post. By December 4th, she was hospitalized at IU North in Indiana. It was only after a CT scan showed new lymphadenopathy, a disease in which the lymph nodes become enlarged, that the hospital agreed to treat her pain, she said. You have to show proof that you have something wrong with you in order for you to get the medicine, she also said in the video. Then he went on to say, you don't qualify. I must have because um, I've gotten two treatments. Dr. Stanford, a pediatric surgeon and the founder of the Black Doctors Coro Consortium, said that the lymphadenopathy would indicate that the disease process was going on for a period of time and that Moore's body was fighting off the disease. And despite her pain, the doctor told Moore he might send her home. He further stated, you should just go home right now and I don't feel comfortable giving you any more narcotics. I was in so much pain from my neck. My neck hurt so bad. And he said he didn't feel comfortable giving her more narcotics. He made me feel like I was a drug addict, he said in the video, and he knew I was a physician. Moore, who was an internist, said her pain was adequately treated only after she raised concerns about her treatment. So, spoke to patient advocate who left me wanting. Um, there's not much I can do. So I started asking, send me to another hospital where they can treat me. But if they're not gonna treat me here properly, send me to another hospital. Next thing I know, I'm getting a stat, CT of my neck with and without contrast. The CT went down a little bit into my lungs and you could see new pulmonary infiltrates, new uh, lymphadenopathy all throughout my neck. And all of a sudden, yes, we'll treat your pain. You have to show proof that you have something wrong with you in order for you to get the medicine. She was later discharged from the hospital, but returned to a different hospital less than 12 hours later, she wrote on her Facebook page. I put forward and I maintain, if I was white, I wouldn't have to go through that. A spokesman for the IU North Hospital said, as an organization committed to equity and reducing racial disparities in healthcare, we take accusations of discrimination very seriously and investigate every allegation, he said. But racism in healthcare is nothing new. Moore's story speaks to a broader issue of what experts call implicit racial bias in healthcare towards black patients. Studies have shown that black patients are in some situations prescribed less pain medication than their white counterparts. And a recent article in the New England Journal of Medicine attributed unequal treatments in part to enduring racist cultural beliefs and practices. The article cited a 2016 study that found half of white medical students and residents held unfounded beliefs about intrinsic biological differences between black people and white people, falsely believing the pain of black patients was less severe than white patients. You know, there's this belief that black people are intrinsically disease prone and implicitly or explicitly not deserving of high quality care. 
Well, Dr. Moore leaves behind a 19-year-old son, Henry Mohammed, and her elderly parents, both of whom have dementia. Her son said, nearly every time she went to the hospital, she had to advocate for herself, fight for something in some way, shape, or form, just to get baseline proper care, he told the Times. This is how black people get killed, Moore said in a video, when you send them home and they don't know how to fight for themselves. She shared it with a group of her friends, all black women surgeons across the country. They could all relate, Stanford said, having experienced the same treatment despite their expertise. We all have the stories, she said, and if any of us get sick, please don't be silent. Be vigilant, be present, be public. She was one of us. I think this is another senseless and uh, needless death of a black professional. You know, racism, people don't believe exists, but it does. It does exist. How many times have we been confronted with an issue like that? You know, looking at this uh, wonderful individual with a son and parents, elderly parents, you know, leaving them behind, I think that is rather unfortunate. If, if a professional like that, a me medical person, who has been saving lives, not only blacks, but of all races, can be left to die in this manner, then those of us, those of us, the downtrodden, you know, we don't have any chance at all. So let's continue to talk about this. Let's talk about it. I think the more we talk about it, the more attention that this thing gets. It needs to get the attention that it deserves. Racism has to be talked about to the day that, you know, it becomes a thing of the past. Uh, this year, we had a very tumultuous year. If we're talking about racism, like everybody knows the whole Black Lives Matter movement and everything. And I remember when George Floyd passed and I said on my channel, I had a whole bunch of videos planned and I was like, no, I need to stop. I need to just push all those videos uh, into the future because I need to stop and actually address this. And I think we need to address these type of things. We need to address, if you have a platform and you see things like this happening, you see injustice, you need to speak out about it. This made mainstream news. This was on CNN. And the thing is, some people might say that, you know, this doesn't only happen to black people. This happens to people of all races. But there's something to be said for that. It happens more to black people than any other race. Lead poisoning reveals environmental racism in the US. A recent study shows that being black is a bigger risk factor for lead poisoning than poverty or poor housing. Colorblind health policy has exacerbated the environmental injustice. Reports that Coro is disproportionately killing African Americans in the United States is no surprise to the country's public health researchers. Dozens of other public health threats from polluted water in Flint, Michigan, to parasites like hookworm in Alabama, have shown that African Americans are exposed to environmental dangers and ill health more than white Americans. And the list goes on, but we want this video to be short. I think everybody has to have a, the black folks too. I mean, feel safe. The government has to do something about it because it's getting worse. There's no improvement in our lives, no matter what. When I got to know that she was herself a medical person, uh, I concluded that that's not a way for a person like that to go. She's been, you know, uh, dehumanized, mm -hmm. to say the least. She's been dehumanized. And uh, like I said earlier, the more we talk about this, we know we kind of, it's not the government alone but we are all in this together the more we talk about racism the better mm. we have to stand up talk about it till one day we don't hear about racism anymore if you see it happening if you're on the wards and you see it happening speak up if you are if you if you see it happening around you if you know that somebody's going through it speak up because this woman you know she knew what she was talking about you know you can just imagine people that may not know what they're talking about. She knew exactly what was going on with her. She knew exactly what she needed. And they still discredited her, yeah. you know? And, and you yourself, if you are a patient, know, you know how you feel, you know your body. Don't let anybody tell you what is going on in your body, how you feel, how high your pain is. You know when something is not right. 
stand up for yourself. I feel like these posts on Facebook that she was making were not only to bring awareness, but may have also been a cry for help. And it did nothing. It did absolutely nothing. A lot of people are calling for that doctor that she was spelling his name earlier on or her name uh, to be fired. And you know, it's some of these things, you will never hear what happened about it. You will never hear what the end is about it. But this is just horrible. As far as we live here and everything here is for all of us, we, we have to solve the problem. And we have to be able to live amongst each other. Yeah. You cannot swear an oath and be a whole doctor and 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 neglect patients neglect that leads to death is murder that's just what it is you know these this woman they left her to die that is not right and we should not stand for it at all there is a gofundme page um which i will link down below if you're able to and you have it in your heart to give you can give obviously for her family who will now also be suffering who won't stop talking about it black lives matter in any case if you're not already part of the family, please hit that subscribe button. Comment because I really want to know what you think about the situation and like this video. Let's bring awareness to these things. Share this video and let people know that these things are going on. And I'll definitely like to see your thoughts down below. Um, daily videos on this channel. So come back tomorrow for another video. In the meantime, make time for life. God bless.